I gotta take the ECU out. Look how much easier getting these ECU plugs are. I see that. Now, last time I did this, it was 38 degrees and these things did not want to come out. So I gotta send this back to Darren. He's the guy that loaned me the ECU and S300 while we were up in Robbinsville. Darren, thank you again. I gotta ship this back to you. That's coming back today. So to describe what was going on, the car would be pulling fuel on the long-term trim and then trying to put it back on the short-term trim. This is the ECU. I'm not sure what it is that went wrong. And the funny thing is it did this in open or closed loop. I would pull the laptop out, turn the O2 off, and it would do the same thing. I've never seen this before. So to give you an idea how short-term and long-term trims is, it's kind of like a memory. If your tune is 20% off, short-term trim will be putting 20%, either putting it in or taking it out. As you see here, long-term trim is negative 25, and then the positive trim is trying to put it back in. Because at negative 25, the car was falling on its face. And then on top of that, I was getting random misfires. Typically, long-term trim is negative 25, short-term trim is high negatives as well. Very, very bizarre. Never seen this before. Once I put this ECU in and loaded the map, the car was absolutely fantastic. But nothing like putting the laptop on your knee driving through Atlanta during rush hour traffic. That was not fun. This belongs to my sister-in-law. We're trying to fix it for her because nobody else can get it in. Let's just cover up that so we don't attract any forward attention. We don't want you guys bringing these things. So the bulb is back here and it has a ballast on the end of the bulb, which is really weird. If I stick the camera down there. It's weird, but also very cool at the same time. It's very cool. Look at that. There is a ballast on the end of the bulb. What a cool idea that is. These are only 95 bucks too, so it's cheap. The S2000 bulbs are 95 bucks and the ballasts are anywhere between 500 and if you want to buy one from the dealer, something I'll like 1300. It's the same is on it both sides. A torx head. It looks like it, but it also moves a little bit. Yeah, this one so, doesn't have anything. I'm thinking that it, it probably twists. I bet there's some simple solution to this that I just do not see right now. Well, and I think the other shop just grabbed it with some flutters and tried to twist her out. Yeah, and then realized it don't come out. So it has two teeny, teeny little screws. If you're ever working on these, it has two of these little T10s that are really tough to get to. So that little retainer bracket goes around the new ball. Yeah, looks like um, it just slides up and down it. Yeah, let's just look at the orientation. We'll slide on the new one. And as we can take this off, this was to remind us which headlight it was. Nettie will be happy. Nettie owes us some homemade chocolate chip cookies. So it's time to give my truck a freshen up. I had it done about three years ago. It's a 2020, so it was almost right away. I did a really, really light wet sand on this. And then I had it color corrected, obviously polished out. What the heck is that thing? Oh, it's a fly. Three years old, it sits in the sun almost all the time. And as you see how well it held up with the sun, even the light bar I had ceramic coated. So it's time to give it a freshen up inside and out, do another light color correction and a ceramic coat, make this thing look new again. As much as I like this truck, I'm always looking to build something else and I haven't found anything else that I like. So uh, the inside isn't bad, but I want him to do the inside too. Just the driver's seat. It's a gray and black interior and the gray doesn't look bad. It's just a little dingy on the driver's side. I try and stay clean, but you know, it's like building cars and working in an environment like this. All right, Darren, that is going out to you. We ran out of shirts. I wanted to give him some merch. I did put a few things in there. Eurice is in there. This is our shirt situation right now. We're out of almost everything. We have another box full of shirts too. Large is out on almost everything. The Civic Type R shirts, uh, one of these is already spoken for, but uh, a few medium, a few small, a bunch of CRX smalls. We won't be doing many small, by the way. If you're into small, buy them now because we're only going to do maybe one or two because they don't sell very quick. Medium, large, extra large sell the fastest. Couple of CRX shirts. S3 is working on some new shirts as well as some hoodies and some long sleeve shirts. So check those out. Check these out in the store. If there's something in here you want to buy, get it now. The Civi Type R shirt, once it's gone, it's gone. The truck came out absolutely amazing. This is a really pretty color. By the way, this color is called Kinetic Blue Pearl. When I was looking for this truck, there was only three in Florida. It took me quite a while to get this truck. And then, of course, to sit and work a deal. And then, obviously, the color correction makes that really, really pop. 
and the ceramic coat is going to make it easier to deal with too so check out a color correction and ceramic coat for your vehicle not only does it make it look better it definitely holds up much easier and it stays cleaner longer so the truck is a 2020 and we did the swap pretty much right away so the motor has about 500 miles less than what's on the dash never done anything to it except change the oil well now it starts a little weird ready here it kind of starts slow looks pretty much stock under here right down to the airbox originally i wanted to use basically like a thermoplastic tube here to make it look oem but we couldn't get the tubing at the time during covid so many things were impossible to get so we just made an aluminum hose to go to the factory airbox which actually is plenty this car uh, truck made over 300 to the wheels on 87 octane so it's about 75 to 80 horsepower to the wheels more than factory but a ton more torque much better transmission much better gas mileage this was a pain to get out this goes in some kind of clip system in the bottom which i couldn't see at first it goes in and snaps in same as the old one Let's see if i can show you but you slide it backwards and it snaps in this holder down here somewhere there see those tabs there if you don't lift those up, you cannot get that battery out. This is going to be on a separate video, but our S2000, we're taking the turbo kit off to do some R&D on something else. I would never take a turbo kit off this car if this was the only car I had as my sports car. These cars with 200 wheel horsepower feel very, very lazy and slow, especially compared to any modern vehicle. 400 horsepower on these cars is absolutely fantastic so get a hold of us if you're interested in a package like that i want to go full disclosure on this and tell you what we're doing on that video but again i like to use my car to do the testing i don't want to sell you something unless i am happy with it and i know it works that's the way i am it's not just about making money the turbo kit is sold but the exhaust i haven't listed it yet but the exhaust is available if you watch us do this it's a full titanium three inch it's a three inch dedicated exhaust on this side of the car and then it branches off here into a two and a half. So it comes out this side. This is whole titanium. The whole thing is titanium. This is a boost activated valve. So at four and a half pounds boost, that valve opens and it's a dedicated straight through three inch. Still pretty mellow. It's actually quieter than I was anticipating. When the valve is closed, all the air is forced out of this one. This muffler acts kind of like a Helmholtz resonator, and then the air and gas comes back out of this one. Very, very seamless. You don't feel the valve open. You just hear the sound change. Very, very quick. Quick to open, quick to close. There's no switches. Nothing to turn, nothing to wait for. Hit the gas, it opens. The exhaust is available. Get a hold of me on Instagram if that's something you want. Talking of new, this is the H22 manifold. We're working on this in the background too. I'll show you more on this as it gets done, but the H22, once we get all the tooling done, all the parts made and already pre-cut, this is something we'll offer the intercooler for the H22. All right, I'm being terrible at recording today, but if you look at that right there, that hole, let's see if I can point from here, that hole smaller one supposed to look like that with a little stud coming off of it well the stud was broken off and the strap was actually glued to the rain rail so I'm gonna I took the stud what was left and I drilled it out to 3 8 and I'm gonna put a nut in it and then I'll take a six millimeter stud and lock tight it in so that we can put it on just like it's supposed to be and there it is replace nut cert and stud so it works like that one again that one is original, that is the repair. All right, we just got the top on and tightened up. Gotta get the interior plastics back together, then we'll pull this plastic, we'll get it sitting out in the sun, and that'll start getting some of these little wrinkles out. I might get the steamer out and give that a shot too, and we'll blow it off and get some of the little dirt off here. This little bit of dirt and stuff from the inside of the rail. I tried to get most of it off, but it's still there. So this stuff will come out in the sun an OEM top on an OEM frame, so it's just got to sit on there for a little bit and get acclimated. All 
All right, we're under the hood now. We're gonna do the retainers and keepers on this AP1. It's a 2002. Got a nice brand new intake on it. All right, we're down to here. These are the factory AP1 retainers and keepers. All of them look to be in good shape, but we'll get them changed out. It's for more of a maintenance thing anyways, preventative maintenance, so. These spark plugs may be the originals. Replaced with new OEM plugs. But there's a good chance these are the originals. Also replacing the belt. Rotating the engine over and just happened to notice how frayed it was. So this is the original belt as well. So I'm going to get that replaced with a brand new one. All right, this one's all done. Sadly, at this time, I don't have a better valve cover or spark plug cover sitting on my shelf. Usually I would take one that I have that's just better than this one and put it on the car, but I don't have any in stock right now. So he's gonna have to go home with the one he came with. Got the brand new belt on, new spark plugs, retainers, keepers, brand new OEM top. This car is ready to go back to the owner. So we're thinking of having like a yard sale section on the site. A lot of new stuff that's just like left over, a bunch of pulleys right here. We've got about 10 of these sounds to speak pulleys. We'd put them up there and sell them pretty cheap, as well as some used stuff that's in pretty good shape, some parts that we've had. Let me know if that's something you think we should put up there. I don't want to turn it into a sales pitch, but if there's something that we think we could help people out and free up some space and make some money, that's what we could do. CRX still needs an ECU. I've got to get a hold of a couple of mass supplies and get an S300 prepped ECU. And of course it needs a really a good detail. It really yeah. saw some of the worst roads up in Tennessee and North Carolina. It's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video and say hi to the bird. And like I always say, don't forget, enjoy your cars.